week 35 bump date. Five more weeks to go until my due date. It's crazy, time is just flying by. You can already see in the background, we are get, getting prepared for baby. We have started to set some of the things up that we got from our baby shower. And so we set up the rocker, um, we set up a little jumper, uh, the pack and play, all that good stuff. So this week, baby is the size of a honeydew melon. Um, he weighs about five pounds now, um, so he's huge, um, and they said that his weight is going to start to taper off now. Um, he's not going to gain so much um, because he needs to be able to fit through the opening for birth, um, and um, his kidneys are fully developed now, and so he is able to... Um, develop you know waste products through the liver and things like that symptoms this week um i have been having heartburn really really bad this week um and it's to the point where i have to take tums a lot more often than what i was doing um, and it hits me all the time. It's not just when I lay, it's not just when I lay down, but that's usually the time that it hits me the worst and the most. But it's also um, after I eat, I get heartburn very bad anytime I eat. Um, and anytime I'm sitting down, um, I just get heartburn really bad. So that's been difficult to deal with. I've been getting a lot of like indigestion as well, um, just with my stomach and baby pressing everything up. I've been really tired lately. Um, I want to sleep a lot. I want to sleep during the day while I'm at work and I want to sleep, go to bed early at night. Um, it's awesome because I can fall asleep like almost right away when I go to bed at night, but I'm still having those insomnia problems where I'll wake up and it's almost clockwork now. Every morning at 4 a.m. I wake up because I have to pee and then I come back to bed and baby's up and moving like crazy and I'm not tired and I can't go back to sleep. And so usually for the past couple days I've been up from 4 a.m. to 6 a.m. just can't go back to sleep. So I'm sure that is contributing to my tiredness um, because I have those two hours and then I finally fall back asleep about 6 a.m. and then I have to get up at about 7 a.m. So um, my sleep pattern is thrown off a lot. Um, my belly is huge and always getting in the way and it hurts to bend over now. It's, it's hard to put on shoes. It's hard to bend and pick things up. Um, it's hard to um, sit up uh, without leaning back. Um, it's just getting really hard to do any of that stuff. Um, shaving my legs in the shower, it's super hard to bend over to even see because my belly's so big and in the way. So my belly feels huge um, and um, it's just, you know, getting pants on and off, ha having to raise my legs to get it through the pant hole. Oh my gosh, it hurts my belly so bad. It's hard. Uh, you know, it's just the end of pregnancy, baby's getting huge, my belly's getting huge, so it's just an adjustment for me. My nose still feels pretty plugged up and stuffy, runny, all of that good stuff. I'm hungry all the time. I want to eat all the time. I want snacks all the time, um, and I get full really fast. Um, I'm still really craving hamburgers. I don't know why, but I really am. Um, mac and cheese, not so much, and root beer. I mean, I love root beer, but I've actually really been craving like just pop. Um, Coke, Cherry Coke, Pepsi, anything like that, like I crave pop, which I know is bad and you shouldn't be drinking pop, but I don't know, I just crave it all the time. So that's, I guess you could say that's my new craving is pop. I cannot wait until the baby is born and I can have deli meat because I've been missing having sandwiches. I really miss having um, Subway. I told my husband, Anthony, the first meal I wanna eat after I have baby is Subway. I miss it so much. Um, and I cannot wait to have it. I haven't really noticed any swelling or anything. I still have my wedding ring on. Um, my shoes still fit. I don't really feel like my um, feet have been getting swelled or anything like that, which is awesome. Uh, my back hasn't been hurting too bad. 
Um, I still just put a pillow behind my back and it feels, you know, that usually does the trick. Baby has been getting really strong. Um, he'll kick me in the ribs a lot, especially on my right side. Um, and there will be times where he's like stretching out and so he'll kick my ribs and at the same time he's pressing on my bladder. Uh, which is great um, and so it's just getting more forceful he's getting stronger and so it just hurts my ribs um, so I'll just be sitting here and I'll be like oh ow oh and Anthony will look over me like what is going on I'm like baby is hit like hurting he hurts me update on baby's name we have finally figured out a name I can't remember if I talked about this in my previous vlog or not so sorry if I did we do have a name we're not announcing it yet because we're worried I just I want to make sure it is the name, but we're pretty sure we have a first and a middle name and I like it. I use it a lot. So hopefully I'll be able to announce it soon. If not, definitely when he's born, I will announce it. I haven't been feeling any nausea, which is awesome because I'm always hungry. I did feel some cramping the other day. Um, it was about lunchtime um, last Friday and um, I just all of a sudden got cramps. Um, and it felt like I was going to start my period is what it felt like. Um, but, um, so that stayed, but it wasn't like, it didn't feel like what I would think a contraction or Braxton Hicks would feel like. It was just a constant, um, cramp, a constant cramping feeling like I was going to start my period. Um, but again, it wasn't like, oh, I felt it for, you know, a minute or two and then it went away and then it came back after like five minutes. No, it was just constant cramping. Um, so it freaked me out a little bit. Um, so it happened around lunchtime and it lasted for like maybe an hour or two. Um, and then it went away. Um, and then it came back about later Friday evening. I got cramps again. Not as bad and strong as when they were during lunch, but they did come back. So, of course, it worried me and freaked me out a little bit. And, of course, I did a ton of Googling. And, you know, anytime you Google anything, everybody's like, oh, you're in labor. Go to the emergency room. I'm like, no, I'm not going to go to the emergency room and waste my money for them to tell me everything's fine. I looked it up, and some people were like, oh... Um, it's just baby like getting lower, your uterus is stretching, it's totally normal. Other people were like, oh my gosh, it's pre-labor, you know, different stuff like that. But I went with the, oh, it's just your uterus is stretching, you're just getting ready for labor, it's totally normal. Um, I have my doctor's appointment next week with my doctor, so I'm going to talk to her about that. I'm sure it'll be fine. But I have not felt any cramping since then. Uh, so this week we had more of our parenting classes. We had our parenting class part two and then we also had our tour of the hospital. So the parenting class part two is really good. Um, we went over um, the first class I focused more on like what happens before you go in the hospital and like pre-labor and stuff like that. This, the second part of class went over labor, what to expect, and then post-labor and all of that. So it was really good, really cool to learn that stuff. I learned about the 511 rule, which is you should um, wait to go to the hospital until you're having, I believe it's contractions. You've been having them for an hour. They come every five minutes and last a minute. I think that's right. Um, once that's happening, then you should go to the hospital. If you go any earlier, they might send you back home. So I ha that's good to keep in mind. Um, and they told all the husbands like to stay calm and to reassure the mom and give positive statements like you're doing great, um, you're so beautiful, you know, things like that. And they told that the dads like you need to stay calm because mom's going to be freaking out. And if you're freaking out, it's going to make mom freak out more. So I'm glad they said that. Hopefully Anthony will be able to keep me calm. He usually is my rock. I'm usually the one that gets like really antsy and and crazy and I freak out very easily. So it was good. That was a really good class. I'm glad we took it. Um, and then the next day we had our maternity tour, which was really cool to go to. Um, we went to the hospital that we're going to be delivering at. Um, and yeah, we went and saw, um, you know, where you go when you first come in, um, where the room that they'll take you to, to test you, to see if you're actually in labor. We saw the room that you'll labor in, and then we also saw the postpartum, like where you'll be after you deliver. So it was kind of scary to see all of, you know, those rooms, like it just made it feel a lot more real. Um, we saw like the bed that I'll be on, we saw, um, 
you know, we didn't see any of, like, uh, too many of, like, the machines that they're going to hook you up to and stuff, because our hospital likes to be a lot more, like, calming and just look more like a home than a hospital, which was really awesome. So I didn't see anything scary like forceps or anything like that. Uh, but our hospital is super, super nice. It's only like 10 years old. Um, and each room has like a mini fridge in it so we can have food. Um, I get three meals a day there. Anthony gets three meals a day there. Um, and it's just a really nice hospital. They have like a, you know, nice waterfall and they've got a Starbucks and you know all that good stuff so um, it was cool seeing all that it made me a little nervous seeing all that but it was good to know like this is where you go when you first come in this is what to expect so I really enjoyed that so our parenting classes are basically done now so again we took a a uh, newborn basic class, we took a breastfeeding class, we took a childbirth education class, and we took a maternity tour. Um, the only other class that we might take is a, a infant CPR class. I have to see if they're offering any before my due date, because um, I only have, what, five weeks left till my due date, so I don't know, I'm cutting it kind of close. Um, but that's the only other class I might sign us up for. I really encourage people to go and sign up for those classes. I know they can be kind of expensive, um, but I think they were totally worth it, especially for Anthony, because like I said in my other vlog, I just feel like if I didn't make him go to these classes and sit there and listen to it, he would not have looked up the information on his own and he would be clueless. So at least he has a little more knowledge of what's going to happen, how to prepare for baby, different things like that. Um, so I think it was totally worth every penny, at least in my situation. Um, and definitely take a tour of your hospital. Ours was free. Um, and it's just good to know like where to go, what to expect and everything like that. Let me show you my 35 week belly. Okay guys, here's my belly from the side with clothes on, with my shirt on. And then pulling it up. Here is my belly from the side. Notice my lovely stretch marks. Here is my belly from the front. And here is my belly from the side. So I feel huge, baby is huge, my tummy is very hard. Um, but yep, yeah, here it is, 35 weeks. So I think that's all I have for this week. Um, stay tuned next week. I will be 36 weeks and I have my next doctor's appointment. And starting at 36 weeks, I'm gonna go weekly to my doctor. So every week after this one, I will have an update from the doctor. Um, my next doctor's appointment, which is next week, they're gonna check and see if baby is head down. So I think he is head down, but I'm not quite sure. So I'm really, Excited to see about that. I'm hoping my blood pressure will be okay because I know it's been up and down lately. So we'll just have to see. So definitely stay tuned, subscribe to my channel, leave a comment down below, and I'll see you guys next week. Bye guys.